Hi, I'm Ashy. Today we're going to tackle a really big, big subject. We are going to learn how to read a written crochet pattern. I know I used to shy away from certain patterns, especially like clothing patterns, just because I wasn't confident in my ability to actually read the pattern and to follow it and end up with the actual finished product that they said I should. Are there any projects that you've kind of shied away from because the pattern just looks a little too intimidating? Let me know in the comments. The first thing that I had to realize is that the pattern is basically like a recipe. It should include the name and description, the kind of materials or ingredients that you need, and then the actual instructions of how to do it. A picture is also super nice so that you know what it's supposed to look like at the end for food or for crochet patterns. So the list of things that should be included on any crochet pattern are the name and description of the project, the difficulty level, the materials, the gauge, the size information, the abbreviation list and any kind of special notes or instructions, the actual pattern, and then any kind of finishing steps. So let's dive into each one of those now and look at what information each of those sections should actually include and what that information actually means when you actually go to crochet it. So the first part of the pattern is going to be the name and description section. So the name is whatever the designer chooses to name the pattern. So it may or may not indicate what it is exactly, but it's just the name. And then the description should be something in kind of layman's term, it should not include jargon, about the, the project. So maybe it's function or any features of the projects or the style of the project. And that should be listed out just in very plain terms. The next section is gonna be the difficulty level. So the difficulty level should very plainly state if the pattern was written for beginner crocheters, intermediate crocheters, or advanced or like expert crocheters. Sometimes there's some gray areas and it'll have something in between, but it should give you an indication of how much should you know about crochet before you start to actually take on this project. The section after that's gonna be your materials. So the most obvious one is the yarn. Um, so it'll list what yarn you need. Most patterns, will state a specific like brand and color for your yarns, but not all of them will. The information that you really need to pick out from this yarn section is the yarn weight. So yarn weight is actually the thickness of the fiber or the strand of yarn. So it can range anywhere from one to seven with one being a very fine, thin strand of yarn and seven being super bulky. Um, a weight four is considered medium weight yarn. So you need to look for that. Then you also need to look for the amount of yarn that you're going to need. So it should say the yarn weight and then either the yardage or the number of ounces or grams of yarn that you'll need. So it might say weight for seven ounces. And that would just tell you that you need a medium weight yarn and you need seven ounces of that. And the skein, the yarn skein will tell you how much yarn is in that skein. This section might also tell you information about the yarn fiber itself. So whether it is wool or acrylic or cotton yarn, and that's helpful to know because if you're going to be using a different brand than they stated, you need to know what type of yarn they used as well. They may also say, what are some substitutes that you can use if you can't find or don't want to use the brand listed. It may also list a number of skeins of yarn used for the project. And this is going to be very brand dependent. So different brands have different sizes of skeins. So the pattern might state that they used four skeins of color A of a certain brand of yarn. But then you really, if you're gonna switch brands, you want to look at how many ounces or yards of yarn was in that skein and then do a comparable amount. The pattern will also tell you which hook to use for your project. Now, hooks are numbered or lettered. So in the US, we usually say the letter size, but 
it also has a number associated with that. So if you're looking at a G hook, it might say G-6. So G is the letter, six is the number. It'll also likely say the number of millimeters that the hook neck is across, so the diameter of the hook. And so for our G6 example, that's 4.25 millimeters. And the pattern may list one or all of those sizes. So just be aware that there are charts that you can look at. Um, here's a chart that I have on my website that has all of the different conversions, I guess, for the hook sizes. And in this material section, the pattern should also list any other materials that you need. Obviously you'll need the yarn and the hooks, but you might need stitch markers or a yarn needle, scissors you'll probably need. Um, and a pattern may also include buttons or zippers or ribbon and the pattern should have all of those items listed out for you so that you can gather all your materials before you actually start crocheting the pattern. So the next area is going to be the gauge information. So gauge just means the crochet designer crocheted a certain number of stitches over a certain number of rows or rounds if you're working in circles and they got to a certain size. Now everybody kind of crochets with a little bit different tension. So I might crochet a little bit looser than somebody next to me crocheting, right? And then my project would actually end up being bigger than theirs, even using the same number of stitches. So it's really important for certain projects like clothing that you need the same finished size as the original designer that you're crocheting with the same amount of tension. So the gauge swatch is basically something that you crochet before you start the project to make sure that you're crocheting the same size of stitches as the original designer. So for patterns worked in rows, you, I don't have a crochet swatch um, made up to show you and I honestly just don't feel like making one so I'm not going to, but you might have like this single square it might say that the gauge is 13 single crochets by 14 rows is a four inch square or four by four inches. And so what you would do then is you would just crochet 13 single crochets by 14 rows and then measure it and make sure that it was the same size. If your gauge swatch was bigger, then you could go down a crochet hook size to get a tighter stitch and try that gauge swatch again. Um, I don't recommend trying to alter the way that you're crocheting because you're not gonna be able to change from what's natural for you over the course of a whole project. You'll end up with something a little bit wavy probably. So just change hook sizes and try again, but do keep making that crochet swatch until it is the same size if the project size matters at the end. If it's a blanket and the size doesn't matter as much to you, then don't worry about it but things like clothing, you do really want to have that same size. For patterns worked in the round, so like a hat or a basket or something, or like a placemat, it'll tell you the diameter of the gauge swatch. So it'll say, you know, first three rounds is four inches across or whatever. The other thing that I've seen in terms of the gauge is that it just tells you this repeat or this motif is a certain number of inches long by inches tall. So maybe, you know, motif A is three inches long by one inch tall. And in that case, you would just crochet that motif that it explains and measure that. So either way, you're just making sure that you have the same tension. The section after gauge should be the sizing information. So for a project that is worked just in rows, that is just like a flat rectangular square, so like a blanket or a scarf, for example, it'll just give you the dimensions of that project. So it might say, you know, this throw blanket is 40 inches by 60 inches. For patterns worked in the round, it'll give you a diameter of the circle. And then if it's 
just like a placemat that it'll, you know, that it's just flat. That's all it'll tell you is the diameter. If it's something like a hat or a basket, it'll tell you the diameter and the height of the project. For clothing, it'll often just say, you know, the small, medium, large, extra large, or it may give actual dimensions. So it might say the bust is 32 inches across or around, or just, it's, it's gonna look like clothing measurements. Let's just put it that way. Um, but what you might see in this section, especially for clothing, is it might give you the instructions for all of the different sizes in this pattern. And so the sizing section will tell you that. And this would look like this here, where it has small, and then in parentheses, it might say medium, large, extra large, 2XL. And then what that would tell you is when you actually get down into the pattern, if you see different numbers of stitches in parentheses, it'll tell you how many stitches to do for each of those sizes. So for small, it'll just be the stitches that are outside. And then if you wanted to make a large one, you would look at the number of stitches. So, you know, in the parentheses next to it, it'll have maybe 16 for small, and then it'll have 18 for medium, 20 for large, 22 for extra large, just as an example. And so you would crochet that number of stitches for the corresponding size. The next section is gonna be your abbreviation section. It might be called glossary or reference, but this section should tell you what, I guess, jargon the pattern designer is using in the actual written pattern. We all have to use abbreviations in our patterns or else they would be even insanely longer than they already are. And so this section will list out those abbreviations that are used in the patterns. Sometimes it will list all of the abbreviations used. Other times it'll only list abbreviations that are apart from what's standard. So if there's ever any abbreviations or things that you don't know or it has stitches that you don't recognize, I have a whole playlist on my channel that has different crochet terms and different crochet stitches and how to actually do them or what they mean. And I just have them laid out in a playlist to make them easy to find. Um, the Craft Yarn Cancel is like, uh, I guess an organization that has kind of what is standard also, and that's what I use to develop this list. So it's a, it's a really nice resource. This abbreviation section should also list whether the terminology is US terminology or UK terminology. So just like the hooks, there is a difference between US and UK terminology. So if you check out this chart here, you'll see that slip stitch is the same in both. Um, but then after that, they're all different just with the basic crochet stitches and what they're called. So UK doesn't have a single crochet stitch. It goes straight to a double crochet. So a US single crochet is a UK double crochet. They're the same thing. They're just named something different. And then so on down the line, you'll see um, half double crochet in the US is a half treble in the UK. And so just be aware that there's differences. And if you see single crochet in the pattern, you know it's a US pattern, but it should specify also in the pattern somewhere. The next section is the patterns notes section. And this is kind of what I consider like the pro tips section. So when I write a pattern, my pattern notes includes information about any like special stitches that I'm doing that may be a little bit different than what is standard or just that isn't one of those basic crochet stitches, I'll actually go in and explain how to do them and either write out the instructions or give a video to the instructions or pictures if it's just a written pattern and not online. You can have pictures of how to do it, but it's very helpful to have you know that section. This is where you go to look for those kind of things. The other things that might be included in this section are things that kind of apply to a pattern as a whole that you don't want to keep rewriting in the pattern. So something like that the turning chain does or does not count as a beginning, as a stitch in the stitch numbers. And so it's just things that kind of apply to the pattern as a whole. 
All right, so now let's actually get into the pattern itself. So this section is really the meat of the pattern and it gives you all the instructions for how to actually make the project. And this section can be very overwhelming because it can be like 20 pages long because it includes step by step every single stitch that you have to make in this project. So if it's a large project, it can be huge. But if you take it one row or one round at a time, I promise you can follow it as long as you know the terminology and their abbreviations and what the little nuances are that aren't actually written that you need to know when you crochet. And so that's what I'm gonna break down for you here. So I do have some yarn and a hook and we're gonna go through first working in rows. So when it says working in rows, that means you're working back and forth. You're starting at the bottom right corner if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, you start at the opposite corner. But you're starting at the bottom right and you're working back and forth in rows until you get your finished project. So I'll put what is going to be written in the pattern on the screen and then talk to you in English what that actually means. All right. So here's the first one. The first one is CH62. That means that we're going to be doing a foundation chain. If you don't know what foundation chain is, again, check out my terminology section, but basically it's the first, the very first row of your project and it usually doesn't actually count it as a row. So what this actually means is first that you have to make a slip knot, okay? And I have the instructions for making a slip knot, but it's how you actually get the yarn on the hook. And then you're going to do 62 chain stitches, okay? Now I'm not actually gonna do 62 because that would take way too long for you to sit here and watch me chain 62 times, but we'll just do a few. Okay, so we did a slip knot and then we chained 62 times and that makes our foundation chain now for row one so this like i said it doesn't actually count as a row but it's our foundation chain so for row one it will say you know dc in the fourth chain from the hook so dc is double crochet so what you're going to do is you're going to turn your work and you want to turn it like it's a book page okay so you just had your work pointed that way, you're gonna flip the work over and then you're gonna crochet back the other direction. If you're left-handed, you're gonna flip it the other way, okay? And then it says, so again, it doesn't say to turn your work, but you turn your work, you're working in rows. Then it says to double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. So I'm gonna go and count four chains from my hook and do a double crochet there. And then it tells me that, that those three chains that I skipped counts as my first double crochet, okay? So this right here counts as a double crochet. Those are the chains that I skipped and then I did a double crochet in the fourth chain from my hook. And then it says to do that in each stitch across. So I just continue double crocheting in each of those chains, in each of those foundation chains. And then it'll often tell you how many stitches that equals. Okay, so we're just gonna pretend that I did all 60 stitches that that called for. And so it told you that this turning chain counted as a stitch. So counting that turning chain, you should end up with 60 stitches across. And then your row two. So it says chain three. So that means to do three chain stitches. And then it does tell you to turn your work. So again, I'm gonna turn it like it's a book page. That next line says skip the first stitch. So I do not work a stitch into that first stitch. Just means don't put one there. And then it says double crochet in each stitch across. So skipping that first one, I'm double crocheting in each of the other stitches across. And it says the last double crochet is going to be in the top of that beginning chain. So that means I'm going to actually work 
a stitch into that turning chain stitch when I get to my final stitch of the row. So we ended up with the project worked in rows. And this can obviously be um, much more complex in terms of you can have more skip stitches, you can have special stitches added in, but again, the pattern gives you that information of what to do for those special stitches. You might say to work two stitches in the same spot, but as long as you can decode that, the abbreviations, you will be able to follow it. All right, so next let's look at lo working in rounds, okay? So our first part is gonna be the same. We did our slip knot, and then it tells us to chain two. So I'm just gonna chain two. So I made the slip knot, chain two. And then it'll say round one, and sometimes it'll say RS or WS, that means right side or wrong side, and that tells you which side of the fabric is facing you. This is important for some projects, but not all. So certain like hats or shirts, this if you have different kinds of stitches, the texture is gonna look different on one side or the other, so it might specify. So this one says RS, which means the right side. So I'm looking at the right side of the piece or the outside of the piece. I'm gonna work eight single crochets into the second chain from my hook. So that would be essentially the first chain because I only did two. And I would just work eight single crochets into that same stitch. And then this pattern gives me a little note here that says work the first stitch of each round into the same stitch as the joining slip stitch. So I'm gonna join to, so JN is join, this one actually says join, sometimes it'll say JN, but join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. So you can see that when I crocheted eight in the same spot, it created this circle. And then I'm right next to that first one that I did, and I just do a slip stitch to join it. And I have this pretty little circle. And this is the right side of the circle, because it's the one facing me when I'm crocheting. Now, for round two, it says chain one, just do a chain. And then it says single crochet in each stitch around. Sorry, it says two single crochets in each stitch around. So I'm just gonna work two single crochets into every stitch that I did in that first round. And then it says to join with a slip stitch. So I'm back around to the beginning, find my first single crochet and join with a slip stitch. So the next round has little asterisks in it. So if you see asterisks or parentheses, that's gonna mean to repeat that section. So just note that when you see that, that means to repeat it. So this says single crochet in the next stitch and two single crochet in the next. And then it specifies to repeat from the asterisks around. So that means for this whole next round, I'm just gonna do a single crochet, then two single crochets, then one, then two in each of those stitches all the way around the pattern. And it will usually tell you how many stitches you're supposed to have at the end of each round, which is extremely helpful because as long as you're counting, you know that you're not adding extra stitches somewhere that you're not supposed to have or missing. So that is how to read a pattern in the round. And you're just working in circles instead of back and forth, but it's essentially the same thing. So if you want kind of more details, I also have an example on my blog about a granny square round. Now this is specifically looking at the round four of the granny square and it's it looks super long. It's actually four lines long or something like ridiculous on a paper, right? For one round, it can be very intimidating, but on the blog, I broke it down just like I did verbally for y'all in a table form. So I'll show you here where I have the instructions for the round and then what that means in English. So if you want more details on how to break down the sections of the pattern, go ahead and check it out there. 
So the final section of the pattern will be finishing. And so some, like the most basic patterns, the finishing is just finish off weave in ends. And what that means is that you're actually going to basically um, tie a knot in your project. So, so right here you would cut the yarn and then just pull it through to create a knot in the project. And then you would have a loose tail that you would then weave back and forth with your hook or with a needle, actually sew it in through all of your stitches just to secure it. So that's the most basic pattern. But some of the finishing sections will be much more complicated. So for example, you know, a, a shirt that was worked in pieces, you're going to need to sew the arms onto the trunk part. I don't know what that's called. Anyway, you're going to need to sew the arms on, or you might have to sew on a collar or something like that, or add buttons to the project. So this section will include all of those details of how to actually finish the project. Another thing that this might, section might say is it might tell you to block the project. If it does, hopefully it'll give you instructions on how to do that because there are different techniques, but sometimes it'll just say block. What that means is to do what's called a wet blocking technique where you actually get the fabric wet and then you use pins and pin it into the proper shape on cardboard or some other porous surface, just let it dry. This allows the yarn fibers to um, basically attain the proper shape and then once they dry, they maintain that shape. And so um, it can make your project look a little bit more neat and finished. So if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel. I put a lot of effort into these videos and I hope that they give you a lot of information and help you be able to succeed in your crochet craft. So please subscribe and check out the other videos on my channel. Like I said, I have those playlists with how to do all the crochet stitches, what the different terminology means and they're very short and easily consumable. I also have patterns and some other just general information. So check out my channel. Thank you so much for watching.